The outpost building is pretty extensive, and there's a ton of different things you can do to get a bunch of resources, money, and even build your own shipyard to be able to... Now to start all of this off, we're going to need resources. Many of you might have already been farming and you might have enough resources, but we're going to go over exactly where you can pick up resources and what resources we're going to need to actually start building this outpost and farm. Now I've decided to go to Aquila City. This is one of the first cities that you're going to go to in the game. If you don't remember where it is, it's in the Cheyenne Star System. Then you're going to head to Aquila and then Aquila City. As you enter the main strip, you can turn left and there's Shepherd's General Store here. And under resources, you'll be able to find everything that you need. We're going to need some adaptive frames. Now, depending on how large you want to set up your first base, you can pick up as many of these as you want. I'm just going to keep buying them out of all the things that I need. We're also going to need aluminum, beryllium, iron, and tungsten. We also need copper, but it doesn't seem like he has any in stock. Now, if you want to refresh this shop to be able to stock up on more, you can just head to a bench right over here or a chair or whatever you need and just wait 24 to 48 hours to be able to refresh the shop. If you go further into Aquila City, to the rock you can turn left at the rock and there's another place here called midtown minerals in here you'll also be able to buy everything else that you need so if you still need more aluminum they've even got copper that the other vendor didn't have and everything else that you'll need once you've stocked up on your resources we're gonna want to head to narian there's actually a planet on here that everybody will be able to populate with three of the most important resources that you're going to need for building out once you've stocked up on all your resources we want to head to the narian star system there's actually a moon on here here that every single person will be able to populate with three of the most important resources for actually building out your outposts and various other things in the game. Now you're going to want to go to the Enderifan moon here. It's actually right next to the planet Sumati. And if we click on this bad boy, we can see that we've got helium three, aluminum and iron on here, as well as some other resources like beryllium and euphorium or your <laughs> whatever that's called. And what we can do is we can show resources or scan the planet. And essentially what we want to do is find a place where three of these resources are very close together. Like we've got some helium, iron, and uh, aluminum right there. And if we do this right, we might get very lucky where with one outpost, we can collect all three of these resources. So I'm going to click right here. We're going to land and see what we get. Even if you just get two, that is enough. Once you land down on the planet, you can hit F to start scanning everything. And you can see here that these highlighted areas are are where we're going to be able to extract resources. So we've got a lot of iron right here. We can also scan things here to see what other types of stuff we have and build out the survey of the planets. And what I'm trying to do is find a location on this planet where I've at least got two different types of resources that we can collect. Iron is going to be incredibly important as well as helium and aluminum. So if we can get at least two of the three in one spot, I'll be very happy. Now, as I mentioned, this particular moon will have all of these resources on them, no matter what, for anybody who plays the game. So you, you can build your first outpost here as well. Now, one thing that you can do to quickly tell how many resources are available in a certain area within your outpost range is you can just press the R button and this will start putting out your outpost. Now, you can see here we've got aluminum, beryllium and helium in this area. We don't have iron, but you know what? I'm not upset about that. Finding all three in the same spot is going to be pretty difficult, but it is possible. Now we can see we've got a big aluminum deposit and a big helium deposit right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit R to build our outpost. I'm going to put it right here. We're going to confirm that. And now we can also start building out our extractors. So we want to build a helium extractor, which is going to take nickel, aluminum, and copper. We've got all of that right now. And we're going to put one of those pretty much just right on top of this helium right here. Now, when we place this down, it shows that it requires power in order to function. And we need to build a power source for that. We'll do that in just a second. But we also want to build an aluminum extractor which we're going to put right here. And we can build a beryllium extractor as well, since we have beryllium just next to this as well. Now, once we place that down, we can see on the bottom right corner that we need 15 power to be able to power just the extractors that we currently have placed. At the top right, you can cycle through different things to place. So we have extractors and power. And we have solar arrays, uh, fuel generators, power switches and lights and things in here. Now a solar array is gonna power, now a solar array is gonna give us six power and a fuel generator is going to give us 20. Unfortunately, we don't have any helium to be able to operate this right now, but once we start harvesting helium, we can actually upgrade it to a fuel generator instead. So we're gonna go ahead and place a couple of these solar arrays down. We're gonna rotate it to kind of make it look nice. You don't have to, obviously. Now to power our three generator, <clears throat> 
Now to power our three extractors, we're gonna need three of these solar arrays. This will give us 18 power. Now another thing that you can do while you're building, you can go into the build mode and you can toggle the view to get an overhead view as well, which could very well help you build out your entire base just a little bit easier. Now, depending on what you're harvesting, you're going to need different types of storage. We are going to be harvesting a solid, so we're going to need at least one solid storage. We're going to build a couple of these, though, because I have plenty of resources. We're going to place one there. I'm going to place another one next to it because I want to have a lot of storage. We're also going to be storing gas, so I'm going to put this next to that. I could put it on top if I want. I'm actually going to attach it right there. Yeah, let's try and get it right next to it like that. And the camera system is a little wonky, so bear with me here, but let's build another one right there. And we can always upgrade these later on as well. Now that we have storage, we want to direct our output links to be able to direct our harvesters to put stuff into our storage automatically. You can do this by going back into the build menu, and it's a lot easier to do this in the standard view rather than the overhead view. And we can create an output link by pressing our mouse button or whatever it is on the controller. And then we can drag this to the designated storage device. So now that we have that, we're going to actually create the output link right there. And since we have two of these things, what we want to happen is we want to be able to fill up both of these. So we can create another out. So we can create another output link from this storage device over to this one. And what's going to happen is it's going to fill up this storage device first, and then it's going to start filling up this one because it's going to transfer into here, then it's going to transfer into here, and once it's full, then it's going to fill up here. And we can do that with all of our solids as well. So we can create an output link. We're going to link it to our solids. We're going to create an output link here, and we're going to put these both into the same solids, just like that. And then we're going to create an output link from here, over to here. And basically we can create storage overflow over time, depending on how much resources you have. You can basically infinitely expand your storage facility. Now what we can do, since we have helium here, we can upgrade our fuel generation if we want. So we can put a fuel generator down. And then what we can do is we can create an output link from our helium storage over to the generator. And then that way our generator will always be fueled automatically as we're extracting it from the ground. This moon is definitely one of the first places you're gonna wanna start farming up and building out one of your outposts because it just gives you a lot of the necessary materials to get things done really easily. If we wanted to, we could also build a transfer container so that way we can transfer it directly from here into our ship cargo. There's a ton of various structures that we can build out as well. One of the most important things that you'll wanna upgrade to eventually is under miscellaneous and it's called the cargo link. You can build these in two different outposts and you can link them together to allow the transfer of goods between them. So if you're really trying to fully build out one specific outpost, you can link them all together to get all of the resources you need at one. Now since this planet has iron, helium, beryllium, and aluminum on here, we can go find an iron, we can go build an iron outpost and get it all transferred here if we want. You'll also want to build crew stations to be able to sign crew here to be able to enhance your outpost. So now what we can do is actually start setting up our outpost and it'll all be powered by everything we have built already. So we're going to build an airlock like this. And then from there, you can kind of build it out however you want. I'm going to place these science hab smalls in here because I kind of think they look nice. And then we can link that to maybe a hydroponic hab because it's got some windows and things like that. You can really build all of this stuff out however you want. I believe also depending on if the planet you're on is habitable or not, you might not need an airlock. Obviously we're not building on one right now, so we definitely need one. And then once inside, what you can do is you can use your scanner and then you can hit the build mode. So you're just gonna hit R again. And this will allow you to build inside of here. It's a little weird how they made this work, but who am I to complain, I guess. Inside of here, you can put down like your workbenches, weapon workbenches, research labs. You can do all sorts of defenses, decorations, but you're definitely gonna want your crew stations. Now I want my crew members to have a nice view, so I'm gonna give them the, the nice windowed area, I suppose, and maybe I'll just put it like back to back, but you can really design these however you want. Now, once you do have some crew stations, what we can do is we can actually assign them to this outpost. So we can go into our menu, and then we can go to the ship here on the bottom left, and then we're going to hit the crew. Now from here, what we can do is if we have anybody that would suit actually being in an outpost, then we can go ahead and put them here. But say we wanted to put Sam here, we could totally do that, and we'll put it at outpost 1, and maybe we'll put Sarah Morgan here for now as well. Now one thing that's really interesting is we can actually speed up time to be able to get all of these resources very quickly. You can see that I just emptied all of this out, 
And if we head inside of our little hab here, we can sit down at the couch and we can wait time, let's say just seven hours because we're actually waiting 41 hours UT, just because time differs depending on where you are. Now we can get up from that chair, we can head out, and you'll notice that our storage areas are completely full once again. So you can actually just speed up time and collect all of these items for money or resources or whatever you're trying to do. You can actually just basically skip time and get a ton of resources by doing this. Now that we know we can do that, we can create more output links. So we can go from this little overflow container that we built first, we can link it to this one, and then we can link that one to here. And then we can actually link this to our transfer container to allow us to basically transfer things directly into our ship's cargo. We can do that with all of these. So you can kind of see how all the systems work. And I kind of wanted to do a basic video of how to really start off building your first base. The way we have set up already will really help you be able to get a ton of resources to get into some of the more advanced outpost building mechanics, and especially being able to time travel to get all of those resources and stockpile them very quickly is going to be super duper helpful, but I really do hope you all enjoyed it. The next video we do will actually be a more in-depth into crew and advanced systems for the outpost, so definitely make sure to keep an eye out on that, and I'll see you all in the next one.